Hey, Mr. Bear. So we were walking down to look for a place to camp. I've already seen four grizzlies. Now we just saw three more, so that's seven. There's going to be bears all over the place. You hear him gallop, damn. Yeah, you can hear him. Remember last night that sow of cubs kept looking this way? I wonder if that bear's been on this side the whole time. Yeah, probably. Looks like another beautiful day here in Bear Central. <laughs> you ain't kidding. I, I Well, I'm here in the Teton Wilderness with uh, Joey, and there's a uh, no solid plan. We're at Brooks Lake for day. I think we decided we're gonna stay low and choose our own adventure as we get going. Here's the bug netting on. And that wind's not blowing. Get a little mosquito parade. We're up here at this upper trailhead because we think we'll be exiting from here through the Buffalo Plateau. We're actually, once we get saddled up, gonna walk down this road and look for a spur trail that goes along Brooks Lake. Anyways, here it goes. Joey, what can we expect 
out here for the next eight nights. Probably some bears. Bears. Probably bears, mud, wildflowers, waterfalls, lakes, peaks, no people, and uh, probably a lot of bugs. <laughs> yeah. It's a joint I believe we found our spur trail and off into some of the most remote wilderness in the lower 48 states and some of the most dangerous. We're going to enter those meadows and head to the right. We are now approaching Upper Brooks Lake, and I think Bear Cup Pass is the hump behind it. We'll see when we get there. Really, really pretty. So we reached our first junction, and now we're gonna pull the map out and figure out which way we wanna go. And just play this trip by ear. So we've sat around and decided we're gonna head down the South Fork Cutoff Trail. It's a really interesting tidbit. Joey says someone got eaten down there many yeah. years ago, so. 2014. 2014, so. Here we go. Sounds like it's really meadowy and pretty. So here we go. Trail kind of vanishes and then looks like it picks back up right over there. Tell you what, that breeze is a godsend. Keeping the heat and the bugs at bay. So we're having trouble finding the official crossing spot. So we're in these willows. Oh, There's yeah, Joey. Right and so, oh, yeah. Joey just found it. That's pretty cool. Sunglasses randomly just plopped off my head and broke. So we think we're gonna camp in this meadow. It's really pretty. And uh, I kind of like that grove of trees over there. We'll see what happens when we get over there, but it seems like a pretty cool spot. All right, we found camp for the night. It was about five o'clock. And uh, this meadow is gonna be pretty cool in the evening. Joey and I have been bitching about some heavy packs and this yeah. is why we were we are not going to go hungry on this trip. <laughs> That's more than eight days of food right there, right? <laughs> Check this out. It's another bag of food. <laughs> Look at all this snacks, trail mix. I mean, that's not heavy. Oh yeah, check this peanut butter. Hello, so we're getting camp set up. I'm gonna show you my futile efforts in an attempt to reduce weight in my pack. Uh, normally, Lace and I have been uh, backpacking with our winter bags. Even like our last trip in Idaho, when it was like 80, 90 degrees out, we've been using our zero degree winter bags and our like very thick, heavy air pads. It's just the, uh, cause everything's so expensive. But I think I have a workaround for some weight. Obviously, it doesn't help much because, like, did it to reduce weight. And then I carry, like, all this beer in the back country, which doesn't help at all. But this is what I'm doing. Using Lacey's pillow. You might remember this air pad. That's the one the 
One of the ones that I was able to hopefully recover that one of the Wind River Range vandals uh, sliced open. We stabbed it here and they put a perfect cut right here. And I super glued the hell out of it with some of those patch kits. So hopefully it works. Here's our old REI sleeping bag that the zipper's just blown off of. But I'm gonna use it kind of like a, uh, what's it called, like a quilt. Still got a little foot thing I could stick my feet up in. Just pull it over my body. Worst case scenario, I've got down socks, down pants, and a down jacket and skull cap. But those are my futile efforts. Like, oh, this will help reduce weight. And then I just throw four tall boys of beer in my pack and it just resets the scale. And this is what I'll be eating on the trip. Got the most important items, my beer right here. The napkins are wrapped around it. It has like a cushion so they don't break and there's a Ziploc bag so they don't leak everywhere. And if they don't break, the uh, uh, napkins act as fire starter too. We also got a load of Chex Mix. About two days worth of bagels, avocados, and hummus two massive summer sausage things uh, have three chocolate bars for every day and two rice krispies for every day bag of nutter butters extra uh, chocolate bars and rice krispies that's where i could have whenever got a nice bag of skittles i uh, can't have the red ones so joey's gonna be able to get the red ones big bag of jerky protein cookies the uh chicken of the sea pink salmon it's always really good and a series of freeze-dried meals the uh, taco seasoning I'm gonna add to the pad thai the Alpine Air pad thai because we've had it for a year and really got to get rid of it we've only had a, one other of those pad thais and it's so flavorless Lacey and I never ate the other one it's been sitting in our pantry for over a year so it's time to get rid of it Well, that, the Alpen glow is pretty good right now. Shame all the clouds went away, other than that few made the one. They're the ones, the true heroes of colorful sunsets. Joey's off hanging his food, and he's going to go to bed. He's operating on next no sleep. Couldn't get any sleep last night, because it's kind of funny, because the night before, I was switching from night shift off to vacation time, so I got no sleep trying to reset my sleep schedule. The only difference is I didn't have to hike, I just had to drive. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to linger out here by myself by the fire for a bit longer. And, uh, tie off my earth sack and go to bed. And basically that's the end of day number one. So I'm kind of relaxing out here by the fire, and there's actually uh, frog sounds. Uh, used to, in all the early season trips, hear lots of frog sounds. This year, not so much, so when I do hear them, it's uh, pretty cool. I don't know why, it's just really like cricket sounds of crickets, adding frogs, or coyotes yipping. It's just very relaxing for uh, nighttime wilderness evening for me. very peaceful out here. Good morning. So my uh, air pad I repaired held air all night so that was really cool. And using the sleeping bag as a quilt worked really good. I didn't even put any of my down stuff on it. It was really warm. So that's a good sign for the rest of the trip.
It was around 9.15 and we're pretty much all packed up and uh, about to get going for day number two. We're going to continue heading up valley. We're about to enter these meadows and we've been following some bear tracks and they're headed straight to these meadows as well. A lot of willows in there. So we're making our way up the pass. Wind's picking up. It's been pretty hot today. Forecast said high 54. Felt more like in the 70s. We're getting up into some altitude as well, which also adds to the heat. Left here, still some snow which is a good sign, means there's gonna be water. We've got water up here too. We are up at the pass. It's pretty open. Hearing the sound of music. Looks like the flowers up here are just starting to bud. Wonder how long five days, four or five days, will be their, their growth while we're out here. Pretty fantastic. My satellite messenger said the high was going to be 54 today. We certainly, that. it certainly doesn't. I think we hit that in the tent this morning. <laughs> yeah. It feels more like upper 60s, 70 something. Really pretty area. All right, so here's the other side of our pass. We're gonna sit down here, take a break, get some water in us, and watch to see if there's any uh, critters moving around down there. Looks like there's a lot of willows. Very gorgeous area. You're probably saying the same thing we were, this 75 degree shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go sit in the trees in the snow, snow bank. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> It'll be dark soon. It must be nice being a weatherman. <laughs> Break is over. Now we are dropping down into this beautiful valley. Gained a little elevation out of the drainage we're going down. Check out this uh, cool little canyon. Looks like there's two conjoining ones. Looks like we finally made it down to the valley floor. And uh, looks like we got some meadow hiking in our future.
there's uh, back where we came from. It is really hot today. Well, we're hiking in more burn, but that doesn't mean the views aren't good. They may kind of open the views up a little. Very wild place with a very hot sun. All these clouds are uh, breaking up before they could give us any shade. Day is basically over. We got some nice shade at this camp that Joey knew about. Uh, after that last shot, they didn't film much because we had to walk through an outfitter camp over there. They're really nice. And then we had to cross Lake Creek here. And we got a nice fire pit, tons of firewood, good camping spots, most importantly shade. And another good bonus is in the morning we won't have to cross a creek. Just get up and get going with dry gear. So Joey and I have our camp back in there, and we've been over here by the fire, eating and uh, enjoying the evening, cooling down. And here's the view out this way. Good morning, we're getting packed up and uh, today's objective number one is uh, Ferry Lake. Got about 2,000 feet of gain to get to it. So hopefully it stays nice and cool like it's been. It's a little past nine. It's scorching hot. Ooh. Can't wait to get out of the trees and up high in the wind. The steep drop down to the canyon. It sounds like there's a lot of turmoil down there. Maybe just a lot of waterfalls or something. We are now on the home stretch to Fairy Lake, and uh, it's still hot. As we get higher, we're starting to get some pretty cool views. So we started way down around that corner. Now we made it up here, and uh, the trail's still going up, up, up. Some wind would be really nice. Now, huh? Oh yeah. Fairy Lake is behind those trees right there down in that bowl. That's where we're heading. Take a nice break there. And after break, we're gonna start cutting over. Can't see because it's over the hill this direction. Here is Fairy Lake. It's very beautiful. After we take break, we are gonna head that way.
First wildlife of the trip. Got an elk, bull elk. Has some velvet on its antlers. So our lunch break is over. We're gonna walk a bit towards the lake shore, then uh, cut up this way. You see the old pass thing there? We're gonna head up through there. Head into Marston Pass now. Our goal now is uh, Yount's Peak, or the basin near it. We got one last look at Barry Lake. We have to come back here and camp. This is kind of what the pass looks like ahead of us. We are above 10,000 feet, so don't be fooled by the rolling hills. Up in there is Marston Pass. Still got some ways to go. Starting to get into a little snow. in the past now. The Wall Mountain has quite the drop off. We made it to Marston Pass. We're gonna go forward a bit more and take a little break, get some water in us before the next leg of our journey. Is our next step going up that trail there? Yeah. Over that way? It's really not bad. Yeah. That snow, I think. yeah, it doesn't look too bad. We'll have to cross a few places, but I bet. I mean, there's not like. We could just go up to the top of the ridge if we had to and walk the ridge around. We began our ascent up and over this knob. 
head into the headwaters of the Yellowstone. And, uh, ooh, it's tiring. Well, uh, Joey and I just left the Teton Wilderness and we are on the moon now. There's a carcass or something and bear shit right next to it on the snow. So that's always really cool. So there is a bear somewhere in the area and maybe he feasted on that thing. There is Yount's Peak. Here we are at the headwaters of the Yellowstone. Currently trying to decide where to camp. It is really windy. There's our main objective tomorrow, Yount's Peak. Some of the most remote country in the lower 48. Looks like Alaska up in here. My camera's not gonna pick it up, but. Yep, one grizzly, three cubs. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that where you said you wanted to go camp? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told you we'd beat your wife. Four years. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's kind of why also I want to get in the trees just because there's a lot of bears in here. And I wouldn't mind just being like <laughs> in a spot where I could actually hear them. There's going to be bears all over the place. It's so bed down in the willows was a uh... we are Looking for a place to camp. Grizzly and cubs again. Back up slowly. Hey, Mr. Bear. So we were walking down to look for a place to camp. I've already seen four grizzlies. Now we just saw three more. So that's set. Actually, she's got. Shit just died. Yeah, two cubs. Bigger than the other ones. That's seven bears in this basin. So we backed quite a ways from them. Still backing away. They're heading away from us. That means this the headwaters of the Yellowstone, this basin right now has seven grizzly bears in it. And Two really weird humans. Yeah. So the grizzly bears pretty much made the decision for us. We are not camping in that basin. We are dropping down a lot lower. Find some Decent protected camp. I got the bear cam on. So we are currently dropping down a lot of elevation down to these meadows uh, to camp decent ways away from these bears, give them their space. Because uh, 
That just wouldn't be a very smart thing to do camping right by an agitated yeah, mother grizzly. <laughs> that last grizzly kind of behaved weird. So uh, now we're just heading down this bear infested valley to our uh, camp. I see massive meadows ahead actually. That should be some good camping. Well, we ended up finding this camp here, and uh, it's gonna have to do. But uh, these are actually really good for it, despite being lower. We obviously wanted to camp up the headwaters of the Yellowstone, but there are seven grizzly bears that made that decision for us. So we, yeah, we gave them a plenty of space. If I could zoom far enough, but this might be way out of its capabilities. Those four grizzlies are somewhere on those slopes there. And then the three we bumped into in the willows are on that tree line, that dark tree line right there. And it may look kind of close, but it's actually a decent walk. And uh, we're pretty tuckered out. All right, there's camp set up way over there. The fire pit's gonna be way over here. This is where we'll eat and enjoy the rest of the evening at this view. All right, so we're in this uh, valley having our fire. Joey, what is your uh, thoughts on both grizzly bear sightings today, the far one and the close one? It's pretty awesome. Uh, two sets of sows with cubs. It's pretty rare to see that back to back. Uh, you know, we came over the pass and we were talking about how we needed to be heads up. There's a lot of grizzlies in the area. And we saw the first four and that was pretty awesome. They saw us and they kind of just kept moving away and did their thing. It was pretty, pretty awesome to see them. And at that point, we really weren't sure which way we were going. And we possibly thought about going that way to set up camp, so that kind of ruled that out. And then we decided to head down the canyon a little bit, just to give those other bears some space. And at one point we reached a spot where we left the trail and head down to the creek. And we were talking about which place do we want to camp. And at that point we noticed another bear head pop up, I don't know, maybe 200 yards away. It's on the other side of the creek, but really wasn't that far. And then two more heads popped up so there's three bears there and it was pretty cool but she didn't really take off she had a lot of room to run away from us and we weren't sure if she knew the other sow with cubs was in the area she had to have known but she did not want to move off of that spot where she was bedded down with those cubs and so she started changing course and coming kind of towards us we really weren't sure what she was doing and at one point she just shot straight down to the river, crossed it, and was on our side like she could have got to us with, within seconds. And that was definitely spooky. At that point I told Andrew we should move a little faster and we took off and uh, we did see them cross the river back to that side. So that was good, but it was definitely uh, a spooky, spooky situation there at the end. It was, it was super windy and so the second set of bears probably couldn't smell us and didn't really know what we were. And you know, sows sometimes can be finicky. Anytime you get like close to them, they're very protective of their cubs. And yeah, we weren't really sure what she was trying to do, but she came across the river and kind of pushed us, pushed us down here to where we camp now. So pretty cool. Definitely doesn't happen every day. And it was like perfect way to end a really awesome day. I mean, we had a lot of views today. Fairy Lake was beautiful. We saw an elk in the lake. And then we were basically up high the whole time. So, great day. Well, good morning. It's day number four. I wasn't able to get any sleep other than like an hour or two last night. There's something, like a moose or elk, but it's dark so I couldn't see. Messing around in the creek over here. And I heard it all night because our tents are here. Some big splashing. 
and it's dark and I was already on high alert from the bear situation so I'm not feeling too good right now. Pants are also uh, slowly tearing up higher and higher. There's not much I could do except tuck it into the sock and hopefully it stays. So we're about to get uh, camp packed up. Uh, gonna have to change our route up a bit. Uh, main reason for not going back up that way where we originally wanted to camp is obviously there's seven grizzly bears in the basin, but it's the way that one, the last grizzly bear behaved as we were walking away from it, it actually crossed, the mother grizzly crossed the creek and it actually started coming towards us. So uh, then it was weird, but then we got further from it and then it ran away. So don't want to uh, just gamble right now. So we're actually going to head down valley. Not going to do too much today, mainly because I've been awake all night. There's there's something thrashing around in the creek all night that was only like 100 plus feet away, maybe 200 feet away, but uh, kept me up most of the night. I didn't get much sleep until 4 o'clock, like 4 to 7, so like three, a little under 3 hours. And I'm just, I'm just feeling dead. Probably did a little under 20 miles yesterday, and uh, yeah, it's uh, we're gonna have to change our. We didn't really have much of a plan. We're just kind of like going off how we're feeling. Like I said, beginning the trip, but original plan was to spend a few nights up in that area, the Younce Thoroughfare, maybe get over to the Thoroughfare Plateau. But uh, current condition, grizzly bear condition, especially with the way the ones behaving. Uh, we're not going to risk it. We're going to head down valley. Might do night of Fairy Lake. Uh, might do Tri-County Lake. I know we're going to try and complete back the loop to Wall. Or at least attempt it anyways. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, get packed up and uh, see what this valley has in store on the way down to the side canyon that takes you back up to Fairy. So last night we were thinking about... Uh, Climbing Younce through this slot here. Uh, that way it would keep us away from the bears here, but there could be bears there, but uh, this looks like an easy shot up other than this bushwhack section. It sounded good yesterday, but after getting no sleep and now it's pretty hot out, I uh, don't really feel like doing it. Uh, told Joey he'd go do it and I could get some extra sleep at camp, but he doesn't want to do it either. And another reason I don't want to do it is I'm going to try and, for the rest of this trip, limit bushwhacking. Hopefully we get up high tomorrow again and just stay up high. Just do smaller days because of this right here. I only got one pair of pants and it is tearing up to my crotch almost. So I'm trying to hold them together with these guys and I got in my pants so it's not, or my uh, socks so it's not flapping around and tearing more, but I'm slowly losing ground. I'm worried it's gonna tear up to my crotch and beyond, and uh, I'm gonna have to be hiking in rain pants. And that'd be uh, really hot. Joey is currently crossing the Yellowstone River. It's a lot smaller up here. So right now that slope, at some point when it had snow, caused this avalanche destruction. It even went up this hillside here a bit too. Must have been a big one. As this has all the signs of a fresh pile bear scat. It's pretty green and it's super soft. Now what's interesting is the sun's already been up for like four or five hours and it's super hot baking us. 
This scat is not baked at all. It's pretty fresh. Well, up in there is where we came from. Now we're all the way down here. We got a little grizzly warning on a carcass. Luckily, it's uh, last year. At the out this outfitter's camp, and uh, kind of looks like it got overgrown or abandoned or something. Still working our way down to Woodard. Well, we found our camp for the day. We had a nice meadow view. We're near our junction, which is near this wall here. And we found a pretty sweet camp that's been used before. Maybe a hunter's camp or something. cheaper than I thought it was and this showed up. Oh that's why. I ordered the small version. It works good but I use my old thing. Yeah. But it wouldn't sit on it so I took a file and I file put it, down. I marked the things and I filed down the little thing so I could just set it on it. That's funny because that's pretty much what I'm using it's a similar setup. I had the jet below but I lost it. I'm using one. Well, tonight we are going to turn in early and uh, hopefully be re-energized for tomorrow's elevation gain. Gonna regain another 2,000 feet to get back up to where we were before being chased down by bears. It is day five. First thing we have in the morning is a crossing of the Yellowstone River. I'll have this camera in a little waterproof bag just in case I take a spill. Joey said it was a little swift. But uh, time to regain everything we lost on day three. We're experiencing lots of blowdown almost instantly. I was hoping that the canyon is a bit more sheltered from the wind. Guess not. Currently headed up Woodard Canyon. Uh, that sun's starting to come out and get hot. And hopefully we cleared the blowdown because the blowdown's getting old. There hasn't been like a catastrophic amount, but with the heat, it really gets old. Hey, big fella! Yo, bear! Woo! I don't know where he went. He was like right here. I just came up here and that bear's butt was right there. He was going around this blow down and he couldn't hear me because of the creek. I caught the tail end of him. You saw him? Yeah, just the ass end. Did you see me running back? <laughs> yeah, that's why I pull out my bear spray too. Ooh. I came right up. I'm standing where this bear was. He has rump to me and I just basically came like right there. I can hear him right now, he's somewhere close. Looks like things are starting to open up in Woodard Canyon here. Got some meadows ahead. 
Might see another bear, who knows? Right now we're going to split away from the Woodard Canyon, Woodard Pass Trail. Uh, it seems like there's a trail that wraps around this bull here towards uh, North Fork Buffalo Pass. It's not the official name, but uh, yeah, we'll be heading for that guy there in this beautiful open countryside. They've got a bunch of elk heading up to the pass too. So we just finished taking break here, wrapping up, and we're going to be heading over this pass here. Getting pretty close to where we're going to camp, possibly. And uh, I'm excited. That's where the elk went. Flowers are blooming everywhere. The lighting's perfect. The temperature's a lot cooler than down in the valley, which is basically like hell at this point. It's so hot down there. But uh, excited to unwrap another present by popping over this and see what other animals we can see. Made it up to the pass. Pretty windy. Sweet view though. You can see the Tetons out there. All right, so we made it to our first high camp. No grizzlies pushed us out yet, so that's good. Well, it's still early in the day. So yeah, hopefully they do it before we set our tents we up. We haven't camped here yet. Yeah. <laughs> We're at least establishing a camp. There is some willows right there. A head could pop up at any second and walk this way. But this is a pretty sweet spot. It's got some nice flat, which is past two days been kind of hard to come by. And got a sweet view out here. Yeah. Looking down the uh, north fork of the buffalo. And centered perfectly at that pass is Grand Teton. Here's what life's been like the whole day. We've just been chilling in the shade in these trees, really relaxing, popping our heads out once in a while to check for wildlife. And that's been the story of the day. This wilderness just gets really hot and dry out here. It's really hard to move around. We got a updated weather forecast for my wife. And the day I wanna be on Wall Mountain is when there's gonna be thunderstorms which is uh, 
two days from now. So tomorrow, I think I kind of want to make have us make a push for uh, Wall Mountain so I could at least do that before the storms come in. Because the Yount's Peak thing didn't quite happen because She-Devil Basin, the mighty grizzly bear in there pushed us out. But maybe another time. But for now, wall is still a possibility. It still hasn't been yanked from my grasps yet. Sal with cubs. Two. So we're up to 10 grizzlies <laughs> yeah. and 11 bears. Told you. I wonder where she was bedded down at. Probably on the other side. Huh? Yeah. Just waiting for it to cool off. Hell yeah. In the shade. Yep. It's pretty awesome. I wonder what they're trying to eat. Unless that one's digging for like a little ground squirrel? Probably. This is our sunset right now. And what's awesome about it is there it's a salad cubs. That you can't see because of the sun. <laughs> Maybe this will pick them up. Mom looked at us and let's try. Yeah. She caught wind that we're here. Yeah, she keeps looking this way, sniffing. She knows there's people here now. So. This sow has winded us, and she appears at this point in time to be going away from us, which is much better than the last set. But we'll see what actually happens. They're cruising. When you're up here, you don't got many options. It's better than nothing.
They are now retreating further up the hill. Yep, they stood up on the hind legs looking our direction. Now they're turning, running away. Could be. We now have an elk coming in the meadow. Happen in place. Did they go up the hillside? This is awesome, man. Good morning. Yeah. It's day number six. Nice little surprise. Oh, sorry, you're talking on that. <laughs> nope. You hear him gallop, damn. Yeah, you can hear him. Remember last night that sow of cubs kept looking this way? I wonder if that bear's been on this side the whole time. Yeah, probably. Looks like another beautiful day here in Bear Central. <laughs> yeah, kidding. I, I haven't even scanned anywhere. Hello, welcome to day number six. Uh, it's around seven-ish. Joey got up to go get our food stuff, which is 300, 400 yards from us in another grove of trees, and there's a massive meadow in between us, and there is our 11th grizzly bear just grazing in that meadow. And uh, Joey woke me up and came around the corner and watched it. It looked up at us, but I don't think it saw us when it was looking up at us. It may have smelt us, but we were standing in the open, and then I went back to get my boots on, and then Joey came around the corner here and started talking on his GoPro while filming it. And the bear started, then it heard and saw him, and started running away. So it's kind of weird, because he was playing in sight. We were, we're, other than, well not me, but Joey's wearing colorful stuff. We're standing way in the open. We're standing way in the open. Their eyesight thing's kind of weird. I wonder if it's just not as good as, uh, that's made out to be, because we were pretty, like, we walked out of a grove of trees, parallel it, and stood there. And it looked our way a few times, but then, uh, maybe just didn't know what we were until Joey started talking, and it's like, oh, that's a human, ran away. Either way, that's the 11th grizzly bear in the Teton wilderness here. And, uh, whew, yeah. This is a wild place. Definitely not, a backpacking destination for uh, beginners, that's for sure. There's a lot of wildlife here. So you see what we're doing with our tents. We've been doing this the whole trip, basically. Um, it's a lot of, it's not a wall to keep bears out. It's kind of like a sound defense. So if a bear does come over towards the tent, it makes some noise and wakes up and gives you an extra second or two before it starts messing with your tent and so on. And uh, also Joey's read theories from actual bear biologists and stuff that bears also, non-predatory bears anyway, will do whatever they can not to make noise and setting this system up, they would end up making noise by checking the thing out and they like staying quiet. And uh, we'll try and avoid that usually. But like I said, Every bear's different. So far, so good with this system. All right, we're packed up and heading to Wall Mountain. I've been looking at Wall Mountain a long time, and uh, time to make a memory there. Hopefully, uh, not get eaten on the way. <laughs> so the pass we went over the other day is at Snowfield here. Now we regain the ridge, 
and we're gonna walk this bowl here, the top of it, this, the whole top, over to the Fairy Lake area to reconnect up with the Marston Pass Trail. Should be a pretty walk. From up here, you can see the valley below the Tetons. Really pretty, really far away. There's the uh, Wind River Range. And there is the Gravant. Some great views up here. Downs and Thoroughfare, where we were on the evening of day three. Looks like we got some elk down there. Got a stack of rocks there marking the summit. Grand view of the Tetons and the other side of the basin we started on today. Gorgeous hiking. <laughs> How's the ride? Not fast enough. <laughs> down to the pass area just negotiated this pretty easy snow slope here I plunge step down Joey took a roller coaster and uh, yeah we're getting closer so we made it to just above the pass and this trail here is not on the map and it's sort of heading in the direction we want so we're actually gonna take that trail instead of dropping down a ferry lake or ridge walking up thousand feet higher so let's see where this takes us because our end goal for today is this guy so up top there's where we just came down from crossing those snow slopes and those little easier cliff bands and uh, now we're on that trail I pointed out in the last clip so uh, goodbye Woodard Pass and uh, hello wherever this guy's gonna take us. That just ends up going to Fairy Lake just a roundabout way. I wonder if it's because of that snow field on the other trail, but I guess we're gonna stick with this ridge, I guess. So we're dropping back down to the trail now, turn around this big fella towards the uh, Wall Mountain. Now yeah, we're back on the trail we were on on day three. I won't do any filming unless we see some animals because I've already filmed this section and very similar lighting. So next time you see us, I'm either filming animals or we branch off towards Wall Mountain. Scott out the perimeter to make sure we don't get blindsided. No carcasses over here. here. <laughs> hey bear! Yo bear! Break time's over, we're on the Buffalo Plateau. We are slowly meandering over to Wall Mountain. We got about six to seven miles left to get to it. And we'll uh, end up camping there, hopefully.
this creek here. I'm gonna get myself a nice little water break before we take on wall, which is over this. We got it up, and then I think another down, and then an up towards wall. But first things first, I need water. So there's Wall Mountain. That looks like a cool camp spot, so does that, but we gotta see if we can even get down first. So uh, let's take a look. It's pretty cliffy, but looks like there's a way down here. We just gotta figure our way onto this guy here without getting into some cliffs. So I dropped my pack and ran that way. Fortunately, these cliff bands that are a couple hundred feet tall with uh, snow-filled gullies that are pretty steep wrap all the way to this snowfield here so we're gonna hope it's an easier quicker way down by going this way this is quite the curveball that the topographic map doesn't show if we had ice axe and crampons we could just t-step down to that bench but we don't so to avoid injury we're gonna keep going this way and right, we think we found a way down that Pretty snowy and cliffy. Let's uh, see what happens down here. Well, we found something that works. Trees on slopes are usually good signs. We gotta start, once we get there, cross that creek and start angling back up towards wall. More elevation gain, it just never ends. base of this guy to the right I saw a lake or tarn whatever you want to call it get some water and go up to the saddle of wall which is behind that guy and get camp going almost there camp's gonna be that low point there the grassy slope and we're gonna carry some water up to it and then our day should finally be over well, we got a promising weather forecast for tonight. Not so much for tomorrow night, but we will be on the move. Here's camp towards the top of Wall Mountain. We uh, didn't want to set up on the top top due to the winds. This spot would be perfect. We could just walk up to the top without our packs later and enjoy sunset. Pretty amazing views. This wilderness is incredible. It's hard to believe something like this is in the lower 48. It kind of looks like Alaska and kind of feels like it. I imagine the amount of grizzly bears we see out here this is definitely their land that's for sure and speaking of grizzly bears there's a Yount's Peak right there what we're calling she devil basin where the uh, angry grizzly bear uh, Sal lives. Here's the other side of Wall Mountain, looking into the Washaki. Good morning, it is day seven. We're gonna try and make a push for the vehicle. It's over by that mountain there. Got a weather update, we got severe thunderstorm warnings. From eight to 9 p.m. and rain, flash flood warnings for Fremont County, which is one of the border counties we're in, all the way till like Saturday noon or something. So it seems like it's gonna get really wet stormy and windy and 
being up here in this high wilderness doesn't seem like a good idea for those uh, crazy storms. This tent I have is not yet battle tested and I'd rather battle tested on a weekend trip and not in the depths of the Teton wilderness. We are packed up and on the move. Gonna be racing some thunderstorms today. So we were up on top of this guy, but it looks like it clipped out on us. We had to backtrack a bit, drop down into here. Now we're gonna get up on this guy, and this one for sure we saw connects with Crested over there. What we're doing now is we're trying to work our way, we gotta drop down to this saddle, and you can kind of see a game trail going up that slope. We're gonna get over there and then we'll uh, be headed towards Crescent Mountain. Made it up onto the plateau that Crescent's on. That game trail up was pretty steep. Knocked some wind out of me, and uh, now we're continuing for that low point, kind of right where Joey's headed. So the uh, Perry and Bodie Lake is somewhere down this ravine here. Head down there and take break. Then we got this stretch here to walk back to Bonville Pass. Looking down steeply into Perry and Bodie. Looks like there's a trail right there to get us out of there, but have a little water break down there. Get some salmon into me and walk this final stretch. We can break here at Perry and Bodie, whatever the hell it's called, and uh, storms are starting to build. Down south, they've built up pretty good. They seem to be blowing south right now, so hopefully it keeps that trend. And uh, Brooks Lake doesn't get hit till later, like the forecast said it would, but it is a forecast and you could just have that job and just be wrong all the time and keep it, so that's kind of cool. So, working our way back up, these clouds build up all around us. Still lucky so far. This ridge seems like it has a bit more trees. I think there's a camp with a fire pit up here too. And uh, if you look right out in the middle of the shot, there's like a saddle wrapped this down. Up the pass, we went over on the Well, we've skirted the thunderstorm so far. There's a somewhat tinge of wildfire smoke smell in the air. So uh, hopefully it's just residual smoke and nothing new caught on fire. It's already getting pretty smoky everywhere and it's mid-July. But uh, you see Bonville Pass and uh, we're getting close to the home stretch anyway. So my understanding is we're gonna go up this and then drop down to Bonneville Pass instead of dropping completely down into the drainage then heading up to it. 
Here on top of the sky, pretty cliffy here. Looks like we're gonna have to stay to the right of these cliffs. And there's our pass down there that we gotta cut down to. <laughs> Look at these formations here, really unique. We came from that guy today. Walked all of this. Looks flat, but there's a lot of up and down in there. A lot. You can kind of see Dundee Meadows. Which is that down there. You can actually see Whiskey Mountain. We made it back to the vehicle and we're alive still. It's another hot one. Dust everywhere. Thunderstorms everywhere, but Brooks Lake, yeah. Now we head out that way. And a quicker means of travel. The Teton wilderness is wild and beautiful. A place to be respected. This journey has given me countless lifelong memories that I'll cherish forever. From all the bears to all the endless views, travel by foot in this wild place is not easy. Heat, altitude, arid winds, storms, knee-deep mud, and wildlife give me a new perspective on why packing with stock is the way to go out here. No wilderness has left more of an impact on me than that of this special place. As I left that place, place which has been unchanged for thousands of years, it will remain so both in reality and my memory. In my mind, the land of the grizzly. Was a cowboy I knew in South Texas His face was burnt deep by the sun Part history, part sage, part Mexican He was there when Pancho Villa was young and he'd tell you a tale of the old days When the country was wild all around Sit out under the stars of the Milky Way And listen while the coyotes howl And they go, ooh, yip, ooh, yip, ooh Oodaloo, yip, ooh, ooh Now the longhorns are gone And the drovers are gone The Comanches are gone And the outlaws are gone Geronimo's gone And Sam Bass is gone And the lion is gone And the red wolf is gone Well he cursed all the roads and the old men And he cursed the automobile Said this is no place for an hombre like I am In this new world of asphalt and steel Then he'd look off some place in the distance At something only he could see He'd say all that's left now of the old days Damned old coyotes and me And they go Ooh, yip, ooh, yip, ooh Ooh, yip, ooh, ooh, ooh Ooh, yip, ooh, yip, ooh Ooh, yip, ooh, ooh, ooh Now the longhorns 
are gone And the drovers are gone The Comanches are gone The outlaws are gone Now Quantro's gone Stan Wattie's gone And the lion is gone And the red wolf is gone 